Hey guys! In this lesson, we're going to talk about the physical concept of work. The word work in physics has a very precise meaning, but the ideas behind it aren't so different from what we think about when we use the word work in everyday life. Alright, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so let's say we have a book on a table. It's not moving in any way, and it's just sitting there. Of course, gravity is pulling the book downward. But because the normal force from the table cancels out the force of gravity, nothing moves. So really, gravity isn't doing anything here. We could in fact say that gravity is doing no work. Now let's remove the table. What happens? Well, the book falls to the floor. This time, gravity evidently made the book move. Or, to put it in more scientific terms, gravity caused a displacement in the book. So this time, we could say that gravity did do some kind of work. Great! Now let's bring in another book. We're going to raise the books into the air, with the second one higher than the first one. Now, we're going to drop the books. Obviously, gravity pulled both books down to the floor. But the displacement of the second book is greater than the displacement of the first book. In this case, we could say that gravity did more work on the second book than it did on the first book. So these kinds of ideas are the motivation for the concept of work in physics. Essentially, physicists would say that a force is performing work if it causes a displacement in an object. For example, when gravity causes a book to fall, we say that gravity performed work on the book. However, when the book is placed on a table, we say that gravity does not perform work on the book. That's because even though gravity acts on the book, the book doesn't move. The displacement is zero. So work is a sort of measurement of how much a force actually affects an object. Okay, let's test our knowledge with a simple example. Suppose a person is pulling on a rope that is attached to a box. Unfortunately, even though he's pulling so hard that he begins to break a sweat, the box does not move. Now, would a physicist say that the person is performing work on the box? Well, the answer is no, the person isn't doing any work on the box. That's because even though a force is being applied to the box, the displacement is zero. Therefore, a physicist would say that the person isn't performing any work on the box. It doesn't matter that the person's putting a lot of effort into trying to move the box. Since it doesn't move, there was no work that was performed. Awesome! Now we have some idea of what the word work means in physics. But so far, we've only been speaking conceptually. Is there a more mathematical definition? Indeed, there is but the full definition is actually a little complicated. However, if we stick to certain special cases, it becomes quite simple. So let's start with the simplest version. If an object is subject to a constant force, which causes the object to be displaced in the same direction as the force, then the work done by the force is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement. Now, we've written this formula with the double bars that indicate the magnitude of a vector. But many physicists simplify this equation and write it simply as W equals F multiplied by D. F without an arrow represents only the magnitude of the force. And D stands for the magnitude of the displacement, in other words, the distance. So there we have it. If the force is constant and is pointing in the same direction as the displacement, then the work done by the force is the magnitude of the force times distance. I want you to notice something here. Even though force and displacement are vectors, the work done is a scalar since we are taking only the magnitudes of each quantity. It's just a number, no directions are involved. Alright, let's take a look at an example. Suppose we take a book that's half a kilogram in mass, hold it two meters above the floor, then drop it. We know that gravity did perform some work on the book, but how much work? Using our new formula, 
what would the answer be? Well, the answer is 9.81 Newton meters. And how did we figure that out? Well, before we do anything, we need to check whether we're allowed to use the equation. There are two conditions that have to be fulfilled. First, we have to check, is the force constant? Well, gravity is constant near the Earth's surface, so that checks out. And does the force point in the same direction as the displacement? Well, the book falls downward in the same direction as gravity, so this is fulfilled too. So we're allowed to use our new formula, W equals F times D. Now we have to figure out the force of gravity on the book. We can use Newton's second law for that. The mass of the book is half a kilogram, and the gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. So plugging those values into Newton's second law gives us the force on the book as 4.905 newtons downward. Great! And what about the displacement? Well, the book was originally 2 meters above the floor, so the displacement is 2 meters downward. Great! Now that we have this information, we can substitute them into the equation. So we multiply the magnitude of the force by the magnitude of the displacement, and we get 9.81 newton meters. And that's the amount of work done by the force of gravity. Great! But before we move on, I just want to mention something about units. You'll notice that the result of our calculation was 9.81 newton meters. Evidently, the unit of work is newton meters. This doesn't seem particularly complicated, but this unit shows up so much that scientists have defined a separate unit for the unit of work. It's called the joule, and one joule is equal to one newton meter. We represent it with the capital letter J. So, going back to the book falling to the ground, we'd say that the work done by gravity is 9.81 joules. In future lessons, we'll see that the joule is also the unit of energy, so we'll be seeing it very often. Excellent! Now, before we end this lesson, let's look at one more example. Here's a 50 kilogram box attached to a rope. The rope passes over a pulley. Someone pulls on the rope, and the box is raised by one meter. Clearly, gravity is acting on the box, so we want to calculate the work done by gravity on the box. Here's the formula for work, but remember that it only applies if the force is constant and points in the same direction as the displacement. Hmm, how would we solve this problem? Well, the answer is that we don't actually have enough information to solve the problem. But that's strange, isn't it? We know how to calculate the force of gravity, and we know what the displacement is. So can't we just use the formula for work, W equals F times D? Ah, but the problem is, that formula only works if the force and the displacement are in the same direction. Hmm, wait a minute. The force of gravity obviously acts downward, but the box is being lifted, so the displacement is upward. They're in opposite directions. Therefore, the formula doesn't apply here. So we are missing a big piece of information here, namely the formula for work when the force and the displacement aren't in the same direction. Until we get that formula, we can't solve this problem, but we'll save that for the next lesson. All right, we've reached the end of this lesson on work. Hopefully now you've got a good idea of what work is in a scientific context. In our next lesson, we'll talk about how to calculate work even if the force and displacement aren't in the same direction. So we will see you in the next lesson, but until then, 